is Ali Usman. I'm a technologist, strategist, and an architect. In today's video, I would like to discuss the benefits of enterprise architectures and challenges that you may see as you implement the practice of uh, EA in your organization. As you learn about these benefits, please be aware that it varies uh, by organization that how they realize these benefits. There are many factors that contribute towards the realization of these benefits. The factors such as size of the organization, complexity in their technical and uh, business environments, the industry that the organization operates in, frequency of changes in their operating model, and whether they have any funding challenges or not, their risk appetite, and their overall EA maturity. All these factors play an important part towards EA success in that organization. The first benefit I want to talk about uh, is the fundamental premise of EA, uh, that it provides a linkage between IT and business. Enterprise architecture is a unique discipline that serves as a bridge between IT and business by providing views on current and future states of the organization. It enables the organization to create future scenarios to essentially comprehend uh, the effects uh, coming their way. Um, enterprise architecture also provides means to align resources to business demands and needs and can also provide the traceability and visibility when it comes to uh, how the business architecture of an organization is being supported uh, by the underlying technical architecture. One of the primary benefits of enterprise architecture is to provide support for efficient utilization of existing resources that an organization owns. A good enterprise architecture makes it available for the organization to see the set of functions it does, various systems and technologies that it uses through various artifacts that uh, EA produces. It also provides that baseline information and a reference documentation for other processes such as uh, project management or configuration management. Enterprise architecture can produce the artifacts that could be leveraged to make informed decisions. When EA is strategically placed between business and IT, can provide necessary information to not only align IT with business priorities, but also uh, could be used to provide critical information that could be used to make some investment decisions. Decisions such as whether to invest in IT or not, which IT projects must take preference over the other projects, and based on what, um, the technologies that the organization should be investing in, the technologies that organizations should be retiring, um, the solutions and systems that are not providing enough uh, business value. All these benefits could be seen when there is a seamless integration between enterprise architecture and other IT processes such as investment control, asset management, project management, and SDLC. Enterprise architecture is sometimes utilized as a risk mitigation strategy. By that, what I mean when you see a change coming your way, um, and sometimes these changes are inevitable, you either let that change happen, um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Some startups, they're born that way, that it's easier for them to implement that change without spending too much time in analyzing those changes. But for the larger organizations, a small change could be very disruptive. So these organizations are left with the option to uh, carefully analyze those changes and use those EA strategies to make sure that those changes are understood, they are documented, and they're carefully analyzed before these changes are implemented into the organization. This is another big benefit that you would see in every enterprise architecture book, that EA reduces uh, complexity and redundancies. By that, what they mean that EA creates the necessary documents, artifacts, and reference materials so that everyone in the organization is aware of approved set of list of technologies and tools um, and the functions that uh, it usually does. Now that we have seen common benefits of using EA, let's take a look at the challenges that you may encounter as you implement the practice in your organization. Just as they say there is nothing free, so is the case with enterprise architecture. Enterprise architecture involves developing current 
and future states, which means someone has to go through that effort to develop those views and artifacts that represent those states, engage stakeholders, formulate rules of engagement, uh, define processes, and all of this requires a team of architects to come together and work on those artifacts, which means organization is investing on salaries and benefits for those individuals without seeing any immediate ROI. Architects cannot work in silos. They cannot develop views and models based on their own understanding. They have to interact with other stakeholders to capture and validate the information at hand. This creates some extra work for others and results in resistance sometimes. Enterprise architects are on the hook to demonstrate business value as soon as possible, which is sometimes not possible because of the nature of EA. Um, enterprise architects must show the progress to the bike stakeholders on a frequent basis. And while they should work towards achieving long-term goals, uh, they should also focus on showing the relevance by achieving short-term wins, which can serve as an indication that EA is operational and working towards the right set of goals. Just because enterprise architecture is linked with the ability to inform the decision-making process, it is a challenge for some EAs to keep the documentation up and up-to-date. I have seen this happen countless of times. The documents, uh, the artifacts that were once created with a lot of effort go obsolete and uh, unusable. So that was it. Uh, please let me know how you like um, the video and if there are other topics that you want me to cover, put them in the comments below. Thank you.